How's it going guys? Easy question for cardio for step one. Tell you exactly what we need to know, not waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. The links are down below. Now I'll start the clip here. So 31 year old man, he's brought to the ED 20 minutes after experiencing chest pain. He has a three year history of cocaine abuse, blood pressure, 160 over 50. A three on six murmur is auscultated that is loudest after us two. Question just wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. Let's just walk through the answer choices. We'll go backwards. Choice E, pulse is part of satardis. Wrong fucking answer. This refers to aortic stenosis. Okay, this is a fancy way of saying slow rising pulses. Okay, very high yield for aortic stenosis. Highest yield cause being uh, bicuspid aortic valve. It need not be Turner syndrome. Okay, of course, Turner syndrome, bicuspid aortic valve, coarctation of the aorta, but bicuspid aortic valve is also familial autosomal dominant. And it need not, uh, the aortic stenosis due to bicuspid valve need not occur due to calcification later in life. You can get pediatric cases where they just have an aortic stenosis due to the bicuspid valve. Okay, for 2CK stuff, that's high yield. This is a systolic murmur. All right, so they can say a mid-systolic murmur, crescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur. They can say a late peaking systolic murmur with an ejection click, not mid-systolic click, that's my trough prolapse, with an ejection click. The point is this murmur in contrast in our vignette, this is diastolic. They say it's loudest after S2. Okay, I mean, S2 is the onset of diastole. So this is referring to a decrescendo diastolic murmur. I'll explain this more in detail as we go through, but the point is, Aortic stenosis, systolic murmur, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, pulse tile liver, wrong answer. This is a rare finding that could be seen in tricuspid regurge. I believe I've only seen this once on a USMLE question. Tricuspid regurge, in contrast, uh, that's very high yield for pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. Okay, I know that sounds bizarre, uh, but that's the highest yield cause of TR on USMLE to my observation. Not my fucking opinion, okay? I do NBME questions with students every fucking day. And core pulmonale questions, pulmonary hypertension, they're gonna tell you that there is a holosystolic murmur that increases with, with inspiration, okay? So tricuspid regurg. Obviously, IV drug user endocarditis, carcinoid syndrome in theory, uh, but uh, pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale, you need to know that's the most important cause of tricuspid regurg and USMLE. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, paradoxical pulse, wrong answer. This is just another way of saying uh, pulses paradoxus. Okay, so in medical school, we learn pulses paradoxus. And then on USMLE, I've seen this written as paradoxical pulse. Holy shit, okay? So this is cardiac tamponade almost always. You're going to get some students who get real fucking pedantic right now. And they're like, Mike, what about severe asthma, et cetera? Relax, okay? This is cardiac tamponade on USMLE. Pulses... Uh, paradoxical pulse is going to be a drop in systolic blood pressure greater than 10 millimeters of mercury with inspiration. So cardiac tamponade is when we have a rapid accumulation of blood around the heart almost always due to trauma or um, left ventricular free wall rupture post-MI. Sometimes can be seen in uh, conditions like left, left uh, end-stage renal disease. Uh, but Beck triad for cardiac tamponade, okay? Number one is hypotension. Number two, JVD. Number three, muffled slash distant heart sounds. And then pulses paradoxus, paradoxical pulse, plus or minus, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, jugular vein distension. Wrong answer. Obviously, highly nonspecific uh, finding that could be seen in a myriad of conditions. Uh, this reflects impaired right heart filling, okay? That's what it means, though. So we could have congestive heart failure leading ultimately to right heart, le left heart failure plus right heart failure equals congestive heart failure. That could lead to high uh, JVP, which is JVD. Uh, it should be three centimeters. Anything above three is JVD. Uh, could be core pulmonale, right? A lung condition causing right heart failure leading to JVD. So any cause of impaired right heart failure, cardiac tamponade, as I just fucking said, as part of Beck triad, right? Uh, that's going to give you JVD. Wrong fucking answer. Choice A, asymmetric pulses is the correct answer. So the diagnosis here is aortic dissection, cocaine abuse, okay? Now this can cause hypertension, which is one of the biggest risk factors for uh, aortic dissection. Okay, obviously connective tissue disorders, Ehlers-Danlos, Marfan increase the risk as well. Um, but hypertension, especially in setting of cocaine, really high yield for aortic dissection. And so when you have the aortic arch, you have the vessels coming off, brachiocephalic, 
uh, left common carotid, left subclavian. If you have the dissection that occurs uh, between the brachiocephalic, which will ultimately go to the right subclavian, which goes to the right arm, and then you have the left subclavian, which goes to the left arm, if you have that dissection on the arch between those vessels, then that can cause asymmetry in the pulses of the upper limbs. Okay, so they can tell you that they can tell you the blood pressure or the pulses in the right versus the left arm are different. That's almost always like uh, what that finding means on USMLE. It can be subclavian steel syndrome. Okay, it's another obscure condition, higher yield for 2CK. Uh, but it's asymmetric pulse between upper limbs, aortic dissection. Now you say, but wait a second. What is this murmur here that we're describing? This is aortic regurgitation. Okay, so it's an early diastolic murmur or a decrescendo holo diastolic murmur. And you say, well, why the fuck would we see that in aortic dissection? It's because if the dissection uh, retrograde propagates toward the aortic root, you can get aortic root dilatation and aortic regurg. It's a high yield finding on uh, USMLE, okay, for aortic, for uh, dissection. And then these pulses here, you say, two points I want to make. The first is that in the setting of a ruptured dissection, okay, in stage one shock, the blood pressure need not be low, okay? So even if you have a ruptured, let's say, a dissection or a triple A, let's say, um, Blood pressure need not be low in stage one shock. You get sympathetic activation, blood pressure can actually be elevated. And then in stage two shock, it falls precipitously. Now this blood pressure, notice the huge fucking difference between the systolic and diastolic. That's a wide pulse pressure. This is bounding pulses. This is due to the aortic regurge. Okay, that's high yield for you. I've made plenty of clips talking about this. I'm not going to go on a lengthy chat about it right now. But bounding pulses, okay, wide pulse pressure. That's aortic regurge. And this is aortic dissection. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.